Hi, this is Manos Brilakis and Peter Taiti from the Minneapolis Heart Institute, presenting case 88 for the second edition of the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case of retrograde CTO intervention through an ipsilateral epicardial collateral. This is the baseline dual angiography. The patient had previously a stent placed from the LAD into a large diagonal branch that essentially jailed the mid LAD that was occluded at the time. Right now, the LAD is occluded and the mid and distal LAD are filling retrograde via a large epicardial collateral from the second diagonal branch. We did inject the right coronary artery here because we were not sure if there are any collaterals given from the right, which there did not appear to be. However, having a guide into the right coronary can be very useful because the ipsilateral collaterals may get compromised during CTO crossing attempts. So looking at the four characteristics of the lesion, starting at the proximal cap, we get a hint that the proximal cap is likely at the bend of the LAD stand going into the diagonal, but the exact location remains a little unclear. So we have an ambiguous proximal cap. In terms of length, it's hard to see the full part of the distal vessel, but appears to be relatively long at about 40 millimeters. The distal vessel is diffusely diseased, but it does feel from the epicardial ipsilateral collateral. And then uh, the, there is no collateral from the right coronary, but the feeling is mainly from the epicardial. Based on that, we decided to do a brief undergrade crossing attempt through the at the bend of the LAD stand. And if it did not work, then switch to a retrograde via the epicardial collateral or do undergrade the sexual reentry if that failed as well. So we did do an initial undergrade attempt, but we were unable to advance a guide wire through the previously placed stand. And therefore we changed to a retrograde attempt. We inserted a 150 centimeter Keravel microcatheter into the second diagonal branch. And then using a C on guide wire, we were able to advance through the epicardial collateral all the way to the distal true lumen, and then advance the Keravel and do an injection to determine the presence of disease at the location of the distal cap. This is a, a nice um, aid for subsequent canalization, giving contrast with the retrograde microcatheter, allows us to understand better the location of the distal cap, how disease is the vessel, and plan the subsequent crossing attempts. In this particular case, there was a small branch coming at the distal cap, and there was some diffuse disease at the distal part of the reconstituted vessel. We therefore proceeded with retrograde crossing. We advanced the retrograde knuckle wire all the way to the LAD stand. And then using that as a marker, we were then able to advance an undergrade pilot 200 that was knuckled. And now we have the knuckled guide wire and the retrograde guide wire in the same space. We proceeded doing reverse card that was achieved using um, a retrograde pilot uh, 200 guide wire. There was um, uh, no use of guideliner. Sometimes when we do reverse card in the LAD and the CERC, a guideliner is used to minimize injury in the main vessel, especially if we're close to the left main coronary artery. However, in this particular case, the LAD CTO was way in the middle, far away from the left main, and it was also protected from the previously placed stand. Therefore, we did not use a guide catheter extension. We were then able to advance the retrograde guide wire into the guide catheter and then we pushed the, this is an R350 wire, until it exited from the guide catheter. So we now have a retrograde microcatheter going through the vessel, through the CTO and coming back out with an R350 guide wire. We did still maintain a short guide wire in the diagonal to protect it in case of dissection. We predilated the occlusion. This is the short wire in the diagonal. And then uh, we restored undergrade flow. There was some dissection into the LAD uh, within the occlusion. We first placed a stand over the externalized guide wire. However, we could not place a stand before removing the externalized guide wire. Otherwise, Otherwise, we had the risk of jailing the retrograde guide wire, which could be a major complication. Therefore, before placing a stand 
over the retrograde externalized guide wire, it is important to change that for a standard undergrade guide wire. And this was achieved in this particular case by using a dual lumen microcatheter over which we're able to advance an undergrade wire and then remove the retrograde wire and then advance an undergrade stand and stand over the origin of the second diagonal branch. This provided a nice final result with a TM3 flow into the LAD as well as preserve flow into the second diagonal branch. 75 minutes of fluoroscopy time were used and 3.8 gray of air kerma radiation dose with 220 ml of contrast. Therefore, this case is a nice illustration of how the retrograde approach can be useful for clarifying the proximal cap ambiguity. It shows that when we have epsilateral collaterals, externalization can be done through the same guide, but, the, but this can make things a little more complicated due to having both ends of the wire within the same guide catheter. This case could probably have been done in a simpler fashion had we done a ping pong guide catheter in which um, we externalize the retrograde guide wire through a second guide catheter and therefore we have less interactions between the two ends of the guide wire. The third point is that in cases of externalization through an ipsilateral collateral, an undergrade wire needs to be advanced before standing is done because we do not want to jail the retrograde externalized guide wire. And that can be facilitated by using a dual lumen microcatheter followed by standard standing plantation. Thank you.